Hey, this is Drew Baird from Moon Audio, and oh boy, is this an exciting day. This has been a long time coming, and as you can tell, my mind is blown. This is the new Lena line from DCS Audio. Like I said, long time coming. Back in February 2020, right before the pandemic, I paid a visit to DCS in, in the UK to find out in its infancy this new product line. They had a lot of the architecture worked out, but they were still trying to figure out how they were gonna package everything. And essentially what they wanted to do was create a new Headspace product line because they know how important that has become in the last several years. And what they wanted to do was try and scale down the great success of the Bartok, which it was a huge chassis, very heavy, designed really more to be a preamp DAC in a two channel system, but by the way, they added a headphone amp down the road so that they could start experimenting with the headspace market. Well, they realized that the chassis was a bit large, and so they've come up with a three-piece design, one piece being not in the Bartok, but the other two similar to what's in the Bartok. They essentially came up with a folded design of the circuit. We're gonna be showing you some pictures of these later, including all the internal components of all three of these devices. It's an amazing mechanical, engineering process for what they did to squeeze a bar talk into here. Now it's not a perfect replicant of the bar talk. The bar talk was designed for a different application. It is meant for a two channel audio system and, and it has a full featured preamp section in it. This DAC is void of that preamp section. They've designed this to be exclusively a headphone system. This headphone amp is not a preamp, while it has a gain control that is for headphones only. There are no preamp outputs on this. So this is for an entirely different market. This is for headphones only in the end. That is not to say that you can't use this DAC and this clock in a two channel system. But if you're gonna implement this headphone amp, it is strictly gonna be a headphone amp. So let's talk about this headphone amp. So DCS wanted a headphone amp design that was gonna be incredibly transparent. They knocked it out of the park. They wanted it to be dead neutral. They wanted no coloration, they wanted no artifacts, they wanted nothing to be affected by the sound signature of the circuits implemented in these devices. They wanted whatever headphone you chose, and I'm using here the High Fame Ansus Vara, which is one of my all-time favorite headphones, and they wanted it to sound like a Sus Vara, not a Lena headphone amp. Let's talk about power. Now this headphone amp has plenty of power to drive the Seuss Varas. We've done an extensive test on just about every headphone that we have here, whether it's got a high sensitivity, low sensitivity, high impedance, low impedance, this headphone amp doesn't flinch at anything. There are lots of great options in terms of matching to your headphone load. Now this headphone amp is stable from an eight ohm to a 600 ohm. I'm sure those are just a standard guideline, but that's an eight ohm load is pretty low for a headphone amp to be able to handle. You've got a couple of options to get you more gain control, if you will. In the Lena DAC, you can adjust the output voltage from two volts to six volts. This doesn't change the power of the Lena headphone amp, but what this does is it gives you more volume control depending on the sensitivity and impedance of your headphone. As well, under the volume control, there is a button that um, you can change the uh, gain from high gain to low gain. This, in addition, also gives you more control over the volume. I had an interesting time when I first got the headphone amp. I couldn't figure out how to get the music to play. There was no manual at the time. Let's go back. I've had this for about six months and it's been a secret for a long time and it's been hard to keep that secret. And there was no manual at the time. So for me to figure out how to get the music to, through the headphone uh, amplifier to play, it was all by process of elimination. So the switch that is under the center of the headphone amp that is used to turn the power on and off is also your input button. Well, I didn't realize that at the time. And finally, I just started hitting the button like crazy and all of a sudden, it changed inputs to what I was connected to from the Lena, Lena DAC. Thank goodness there's a manual now. So let's talk about the connection options. And later in the video, we're gonna turn everything around so we can take a closer look. So you've got two pairs of balanced XLR inputs as well as an RCA input on this unit. But we'll get more to that later and how they're different. Let's talk now about the DAC. The DAC is chuck full of options. You can use it as a UPnP endpoint. You can use it as a Rune endpoint. 
DCS has their own software, which is very intuitive, called Mosaic. You can use that. You can do all kinds of streaming services, like Spotify Connect, Tidal Connect. You can do CoBuzz through Mosaic or through uh, Rune. Um, you can do internet radio stations. There's even a way to plug in a, a hard drive into the back of it, and we'll get more to that. It's got some limitations. It's more for on the fly using USB dongles, but we'll talk about how you can use hard drives with it. There's all kinds of uh, filtering, upsampling. You can change to DXD or DSD. We'll get in more to the difference about those in our written review. There's a lot of information to cover and we just can't cover everything in this review. Uh, besides that, we've got filtering for PCM and DC, uh, DSD, excuse me. Then we've got the ability to change word clock uh, connections. Uh, this word clock, and I don't want to get too far off the DAC, but in this word clock, there's two crystal oscillators, one for 44.1 and all of its integers, one for 48 and all of its integers. So in the Lena DAC, you can change, you can do an auto word clock, which I suggest you do because it makes it less complicated and it's gonna auto sense what this uh, Lena uh, uh, word clock is going to wanna do, okay? And which signal it's gonna lock onto. But you can change it between Audio, which is for PCM, Word Clock Master, which is for DSD, like I said, Word Clock Auto, which makes it a lot easier, and you can independently choose Word Clock 1 or Word Clock 2 if you're only listening to 44.1 or if you're only listening to 48. Why you'd want to do that, we'll get back to you in the review on because there's a lot of complicated information. No time for that now. So now those are, the, those are a lot of the streaming options and some of the filters. We've got all kinds of connection points. We've got USB, we've got SPDIF, two of them. We've got AES, and you can do dual AES if you want. Um, we've got network, obviously, uh, and we've got two uh, outputs, XLR and RCAs. And we'll look at all those uh, um, um, when we get to the back of the units. So clocking, I don't know if you remember, and maybe you wanna go take a look, I did a Tech Tuesday talking about how word clocks work. And, and I looked at the TIAC at the time, as it was a great affordable clock to use, not only with the TIAC equipment, but other pieces. Um, it was at $1,700, which is a big difference from this DCS price point. We'll get to price points a little bit later. But this one uses a, des de a designated crystal oscillator for 44.1 and 48. Like I said, the TIAC uses a 10 megahertz oscillating uh, crystal chip, and it basically covers everything, but it's not a direct integer for the frequency responses. And we're gonna get into more of that, like I said, in the written review, too much to cover. So let's do a close up now. Let's get in front of the Lena DAC, and I'm gonna go through some of the form functionality of all these settings so that you can see more on the display. Okay, so here we are with the Lena stacked on top of each other. Obviously, you can set this up any way you like. I, I have them all set side by side on my desk and I've got a shelf system that goes over it with my monitors above it. But this really makes it easy to put it into any sort of situation where room might be tight or room isn't tight. Um, so I really like this modular design. It's a real sleek design, very sharp edges, very simple, very plain, clean. I'm an engineer, I live for this kind of stuff. So like the other DCS products, this obviously uses the Ring, Ring DAC circuit technology, like the Bar Talk. Uh, we're gonna get into more of that, like I said, in the written review. Uh, a Ring DAC is very similar to a, a ladder DAC, but there are some differences. Uh, the current sources are equal across the resistors and the latches, but not gonna dive too deep into that. We'll talk about that more in the review. So I wanna go through the form functionality of the GUI interface, if you will. So again, at the beginning, did not have a manual. So I had to sort of figure out how to get this touchscreen to work. So the touchscreen isn't controlled by the screen itself, but each one of these dots below it. So right now I'm connected to the network, so it's showing Cobuzz right here. We we're using that uh, for listening at the beginning. The, the next one, uh, the sensor is for crossfeed where you can turn it on, turn it off. I've got it on now. And then you can go over here and go through the, the three different crossfeed settings. Now, DCS has come up with their own crossfeed called Expanse. And I'm pretty sure this was talked about in great length in the Bartok review, so I'm not gonna go into great detail. 
We've got standard crossfeed, which is sort of a industry standard that a lot of different devices use for. And then we've got the two expanse choices that you can uh, change through. You will notice when you use the expanse one and two, the gain does turn down a little bit. So if you're using like I was using the Seuss Faras, you might want to change either the high gain, low gain mode, or maybe the voltage output, because you will lose a little bit of gain when you're going through the expanse modes. Once you turn it off, uh, you'll get a lot more gain because you're no longer doing processing. Obviously, the signal's going through a processing algorithm and bit depth is eaten up and that affects some of the gain structure. Then the last one over, we can go through and go into a deep dive of the menu. Here we are, we're shown on the source. You can select through the different sources. As you go through, you can go then to processing. Now, this is where all your filters are. Um, so I can change to the crossfeed filters. Right, just like I did before, you can do on the front panel. Um, I've got, oh, going back one, this is a filter for PCM. So it's got uh, four or five filters for the PCM section. You can go on next to the uh, DSD filters. These are all dithering filters. These aren't, these aren't crossfade, not to get confused with what we talked about on, on the first button, but these are all dithering curves to change the tonality, the shaping, if you will, of the algorithm and the FPGA that is controlling the ring DAC architecture. Then we can go over here to do upsampling. Now you can do no upsampling, you can do DSD upsampling, or you can do DXD upsampling like I talked about earlier. Go over one more, this is phase. You can invert the phase. Um, I never really use this very often. Let's say that um, you've got some old recordings that are uh, mono or, or well, I don't know why they'd be recorded out of phase, but you know, all. A lot of DACs these days, and especially with uh, phonopres for turntables, there's a phase button for doing out of phase and, and changing um, um, you know, whether you want to do uh, mono or stereo signals and stuff like that. This doesn't do mono and, and stereo. This is just complete phase inversing. Okay? This up arrow here now means we can go back out of this menu and move on to the next menu. I'm going to click out of here and go out. Um, then there's, when we click on uh, changing the input to USB, you can do a manual change here, or you can go back to, you know, the network. Depends on all, all the devices that are connected. These are the two we have connected right now. Now looking at the Mosaic app, which does a lot of these same controls um, with a little more information in the app about what each processing is. Right now I'm looking at the main menu in Mosaic where it shows the different devices that we've got on the network. I've got the Lena, and you'll see the Bartok here that's in our demo room. So I'm gonna click on the Lena DAC. The first menu here uh, talks about the different sources you can um, uh, choose. UPnP, UPnP is a universal uh, communication protocol for networks. So there are other programs that you can use with this. I think Jay River is a UPnP, uh, Audio Urvana software is a UPnP. So you've got lots of choices in terms of how you can control your music sending to the Lena DAC. Uh, obviously I've said we can do Rune, we can also do um, the Mosaic for choosing the music and we'll go through that in a couple of minutes. Uh, so here we are where we've got the USB uh, if I want to change uh, to USB connection, obviously we don't have a connection for, for USB right now, so there's nothing going on there. We can change to Deezer, which is a streaming service. Deezer is more of a European service. I've never really played with that. Um, I'm more of a Cobuzz and a Tidal guy, so you can choose your Cobuzz, your Tidal. Um, then we've got Internet Radio. That's what radio stands for and podcasts, where if you're going to be pulling some podcasts that you uh, uh, typically listen to, um, over the internet. Then we have Spotify Connect. Now Spotify Connect works a little bit different when you connect to it, when you choose this option. Now you're actually going to go to your Spotify app. Um, you'll exit out of Mosaic and go to your Spotify app and play it there. And now it's basically telling Spotify to go out on the network and find the, the Lena and play directly to it. So now we can go out of this menu system and click here on audio. Now audio here, we can change all kinds of different things like filtering, like I said. So here's the upsampling DSD. I'm doing upsampling to DSD right now. That's my preference. Um, I'm a big D DSD fan. I think DSD sounds closer to analog than PCM. Not that either digital format sounds like, you know, analog turntables, reel to reels and stuff like that. But I think this is closer to the sound of what analog sounds like. So then here under, when you've got the DSD chosen, these are the filters that will apply to DSD. And they've got uh, in the manual, you can go through and read about what each one of the shapings are of the filters. I'm not going to go into a lot of that. It's in the manual. We'll go into it more in the review. 
This is for the uh, PCM filters. This is for the DSD filters. And again, here are the cross feeds, either on, and, and that's the typical cross feed, or we can go to DCS's two algorithms, the Expanse 1 and Expanse 2. So let's go back here. This now shows all the, the options that you've chosen in terms of uh, upsampling filter, DSD filter, because we're on DSD upsampling right now, and cross feed off. If you weren't, weren't on DSD filter, that would change to another um, um, uh, title. So here's where I talked about earlier with line output. We can choose either two volts or six volts. Like I said, this isn't adding more power to the amplifier. And I'm not sure if I gave you the specs on the single end and balance out, output, so I'll do that now. The output impedance is super low. It's 0.09 ohms. That's very good. That'll essentially keep any kind of hiss noise for very sensitive headphones or IMs. I've listened to these with very sensitive IMs. Dead quiet. Um, we've got two watts on the balanced outputs and I think uh, 1.7 watts on the single ended output, and that's at 30 ohms. So the power is not gonna change with the line level voltage, but what it will do is give you more flexibility in the volume control. There's a ton of flexibility in this volume control, but if you need more because you've got a dog like the Seuss Vara to drive, you can adjust that. And again, the button under the volume control, if you can hear me clicking it, you can change the gain from low to high gain by pushing the switch back and forth. Okay, so let's get out of the line level voltages. Let's go back, click on device here. Now, here's uh, some settings that we're gonna use mostly when it, in regards to uh, the Lena clock. So here, like I alluded to earlier, there are a lot of different ways that depending on what you're connecting to, either uh, a, a, um, a USB or network versus SPDIF or AES, um, the word clock one and two I would primarily maybe only use in a situation where I'm connecting to an external CD player that's only going to do Redbook 16441. In that situation, Word Clock 1 might be an easy choice, but if I'm going to but if I'm doing a bunch of back and forth between the different inputs, a CD player, uh, a computer, a network connection, putting it on auto Word Clock is so much simpler because the bottom line is it's going to do all the math for you and figure out, okay, there's a 441 signal, as you can see here on the display coming through. It knows what to do. It chooses the correct crystal oscillator and the correct uh, link, either word clock one or word clock two uh, outputs on the back um, and keeps those independent. And, you know, I don't want to be bothered with trying to figure out which one to use. Um, there's also the master. When you put it on master, that's primarily just for DSD. If you're using uh, uh, the SPDIF or AS inputs with PCM, you're going to put it on audio sync mode, okay? And then these three word clocks are your three options um, for each situation. Now we can do dual data AES input. I haven't gotten into a lot of the specs of the inputs. When we look at the backside, I'll tell you about the resolutions of each one of the inputs. But here we can do either auto, on or off. So you can connect dual data uh, AES inputs, let's say from an Orander, like we've done um, in the past with, let's see, I'm trying to remember which Orander's got the dual data outputs. I think it's the top of the line uh, W20. And then we've got USB audio class options. What is this for? So this is the driver and the USB connection um, that's used with your computer. Older devices used to be class one. Uh, I don't know, I, you know, if you've got a computer that's still operating on a class one USB connection, I think it's time for you to upgrade because that's really old, an old computer. Most today are using the class two structure. You will have to download a driver for Windows from the DCS website. If you're using Mac, you won't have to worry about a driver, but make sure to choose the correct class here. If you're not getting any sound in your USB and you're accidentally on class one, you need to change to class two because your computer is probably newer and isn't gonna be able to play through that class one old architecture. All right, so the last option here is buffer. So what is buffer? This is when you're connected to a computer via USB and you're gonna only use this in this situation where you're connected via USB. Depending on what's going on with the software that you're using, um, it's essentially a muting circuit. So when you're changing between PCM, DSD, you know, uh, 96 versus 192 PCM. Each time you make a change, there's got to be a relay adjustment and a change within the DAC to, to, to adjust to what that frequency 
um, uh, rate is. So essentially, turning the buffer on gives you a little extra time of delay of the mute between the songs. Now, if we're doing network, you're not going to have that issue at all. This is only for USB, and it really comes down to the software that you're using and may not be an issue. They just added this because they know they've seen this in the past with some uh, USB connections where you can have a relay mode where you may hear a couple of clicking when you're listening to the headphones, when you're changing resolutions. I just leave it on, but typically in most cases, it's not going to be used. Then you've got support here. You can click on this. It's going to take you to the DCS website where you're going to get to see manuals and support advice on your tablet to help you uh, get by. Then you've got standby power button down here. You can push on this. It'll turn off the Lena DAC, which then in turn which I'll, I'll get to when we look at the back of the units, there's a connection that connects from the Lena to each one of the other pieces that'll automatically turn everything off. So this simple standby will shut everything off and I'll show you how that works on the back. So that pretty much wraps up most of the stuff that goes on with Mosaic app. If you wanna get back to the music, you're gonna click up here on the, uh, on the, the Lena DAC, click on the Lena DAC here and you're back at your menu system for looking at music. And at the opening, I was using Cobas with my playlists Here's Drew's favorites that I created on Cobuzz. Um, this may take a couple of minutes to load because I've got, I don't know, a thousand tracks or something like that. So it's not real quick. It'll load up in a second. Um, so this is how you can control music from Cobuzz and Tidal and, and so forth. If you want to do it from, like I said, Rune, you can do that, or you can use a, uh, a UPnP software. So that's, th that's a deep dive in sort of the architecture of the app. Let's take a look at the back of the units. Okay, so here we are at the back side of the Lena stack. We're gonna go over each one of the connections, what everything's for, what it does, et cetera, et cetera. So on the left side, and it's probably hard to see at this angle, but we've got power link connections on each one of the devices. Essentially what this does is where the units will come with a short uh, data cable that you can link each unit together. You're gonna to do one from the clock to the DAC, one from the headphone amp to the, to the DAC. That's the proper orientation of the cables. And essentially that standby button that you saw on the, uh, on the uh, mosaic, you, when you click that, it's gonna, the DAC's gonna tell everything else to go into standby and then you can turn it back on uh, when you go back into mosaic. So on the clock first, like I said, we've got two word clock connections. We've got the 441 word clock one, 48, uh, uh, kilohertz word clock two. These connect directly to the Lena DAC. So we've only got two word clock connections. Essentially, we're controlling the clocking going on in the Lena DAC. We do not have any additional uh, output word clock connections. So if you've got a CD player uh, or something like that, or a Linux audio card on your computer, we can't do a master slave where we control that source uh, to then slave it to the clocking in the Lena clock with the Lena DAC. So if you want to be able to do that, you're going to have to step up to the Rosini clock or one of the, you know, the Vivaldi uh, clock because it gives you more options of word clock connections. Now, when we look at the DAC, we've got RCA analog outputs, balanced analog outputs. I'm obviously using balanced analog outputs going into the, uh, uh, into the amplifier, and we'll talk about the inputs on the amplifier in a minute. As you can see, I've chosen Silver Dragon analog interconnects and Silver Dragon digital cables. One thing to note, very impressed with my Silver Dragon digital cable. Got to give myself a little pat on the bat. We sent these off to DCS for them to test against uber expensive other digital cables. Now there was only one out of the grouping and I can't remember how many cables they test. There was one cable that was much, much more expensive than our Silver Dragon that performed a little bit better. But in terms of all of the other cables, they cost much more than our Silver Dragons. This was their second favorite. Uh, DCS, hopefully, they're gonna be doing a store for selling the Lena products and they're gonna be selling this Silver Dragon digital cable. So a little kudos to Moon Audio. I'm really happy and excited about that. Um, so on the digital input side, as I stated earlier, uh, we've got two SB diff connections, one that's RCA, one BNC. We've got dual AES. You can either do single or dual data rate. So on dual data rate, you can go from single is 192 to dual 384 kilohertz. On the SB diffs, we got a max resolution of 192. Then we've got a USB, all holds no part on this one. You can do basically just about any resolution that's coming out of a computer, uh, as well as the network. Now to note that the DAC is gonna decode up to 384 PCM and dual data rate DSD. We've also got a Toslink connection 
The Toslink connection is good up to 92 kilohertz. Now looking down at our Lena headphone amp, we've got three analog inputs. We've got the RCA and XLRs. Uh, these are what we call unbuffered analog interconnects or this extra set of XLR interconnects are buffered analog interconnects. What does that mean? So the output impedance of the Lena DAC is perfectly set up to do the unbu unbuffered connection. And that's what we're doing here. Let's say that you wanna add something like maybe a phono preamp or something else that's low gain, doesn't have a, have, have a lot of oomph. This has a higher input impedance to give you a little more boost of gain. Uh, because obviously you can't use any of the two volt and six volt outputs from the DAC to control whatever is going on here, right? There is no there is no voltage step up in the amplifier. It's all being done in the digital DAC. So if you got something that needs a little more oomph, that's when you're going to use these buffered XLR inputs. So after the USB connection for the computer, we've got a mass storage USB A connection, USB two. Now this is not desi designed for super large libraries. Really, the thought process was a little USB key uh, max. 32 gigabytes. Now you can go a little bit higher with libraries as long as you're using an external hard drive that has an external power supply. This wasn't really designed to be a true mass storage uh, connection, but for doing quick uh, ads of, you know, somebody brings over a key, hey, I've got this cool song I want you to listen to, you know, being able to plug in a dongle so that in case you don't have it on your library, you can do a quick listen. Uh, the network connection here, you can see we're using our Silver Dragon network cable. Uh, so this is what we're going to utilize to do all of our streaming services, Rune connection, UPnP connections, etc. Um, both the USB and the network, like I said, uh, you can do much higher resolution uh, inputs versus the uh, SPDIF, AES, and TOSLINKs. And uh, last but not least, I'm using Black Dragon power cables with all of these devices. That's my go-to power cable for all of my systems at home. Um, and and that's about it for all of the uh, uh, connections on the back of the unit. So Drew, what does all of this cost? Well, incredible technology, incredible sounding equipment doesn't come cheap. And no thanks to the pandemic and all the part shortages and price increases have really hurt things. So we're looking at 12,750 for the Lena DAC, 9,100, for the Lena headphone amp and 7300 for the clock. Now, I know that's a lot of money, but this is an end game setup. It is that good. So make sure to stay tuned. We're gonna have two more videos. Sara is gonna go into an in-depth review, sort of like she did on the Bar Talk. Make sure to check out that review. She's gonna go into the bits and pieces of all the technology and so forth. Then I'm gonna come back again and we're gonna talk in uh, how we can implement the clock and the headphone amp for you bar talk owners that don't have the headphone edition. So thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Make sure to subscribe, make sure to like it, make sure to check out all of our videos. Hope you enjoyed and take care.